friends welcome back once again to my channel and uh, today in this episode uh, we'll talk about again the cloud application programming model recently i published one video called capm side by side extension on promise using business application studio so this particular episode was all about to extract data from remote api which was running on my sap backend uh, uh, from on the docker system and we are able to extract the data all the way from our capm application built using the business application studio bash and obviously using the side by side extension approach and good to know that you guys tried this and it worked well for you as well but you also had certain concern and so let's uh, check your questions yeah so you you told like it is all working fine uh, if you test it locally but while deploying it to the btb it's failed to load the destination some people uh, someone you know test an issue called 401 unauthorized and someone also the 502 get gateway error load destination problem so it's all about the deployment problem uh, to btp but it was well working well all the way for the local testing so in this episode we'll you know extend our discussion uh, with the same uh, application and we'll try to deploy it to the btp to see like how to fix those problems and what are the things that probably you can take care of next time and also one more thing we'll do we'll also try understanding how we can test the destination from business application studio easily okay that is also we'll talk about at the end uh, stay tuned till the end of this episode to learn a lot of good things and uh, subscribe my channel if you have not done it and don't forget to hit the bell icon because you all know it will intimate you the next time i upload a new content for you so head over to our, the business application studio so before we jump directly to our uh, development right let's spend uh, one or two minute more to understand what we exactly did in our previous tutorial so this was the application that we built and we created a couple of files which all you can find in the service folder a service folder one was our cds where we just told what the backend gateway sample that i wanted to extract and this was my uh, the uh, service uh, folder service um, uh, logic which was making a backend api call and under the library we created one file called connection handler through which we resolve the backend connection so that was the uh, predominantly the three things we created side by side we also added two more uh, services as a supportive one to connect to the destination right because through destination and cloud connector we are able to access the backend on-prem system so for that we need two services one is a destination service and as it's an on-prem system connection so we need one more service called connectivity service so these two services we created the service key and that application our application is bound to that two services that you can see in the studio's private json one the one uh, one of the you know, service called a for h destination that's the naming i can create it is the type is destination the other one was the a for h connect Right, so this is a uh, you know connectivity service. These two services are bound to this application. Now, uh, be because of that binding, we locally we can actually access the backend data all the way from PTP destination. So for that, we have to run CDS Watch profile, and it should be hybrid. So the moment we run this on, what will happen? It will uh, you know initiate this application listening to this port 4004. If we click on that. The welcome page comes and this is the product list which is the entity uh, which should be filled up with the backend api data so if i call this hopefully it will make a backend api call voila and you see the data all the all the way coming from the backend api so this is what we built and i believe this is also working for you now the next thing is the deployment of this application to btp layer now for that we need to have one more file that is called mt.yml file which is the deployment descriptor and uh, how it actually was resolving uh, in the business application studio the destination that is not uh, able to find it in the btp layer but it is able to find it in the business application studio because we created one file called .env where this kind of a mapping we shared and also in the package.json we told like what will be my uh, you know relative path and also what will be my destination so through this configuration the business application studio was able to map to the ptp destination all right so now we are 
ready for deploying this application to BTP and for that we need one deployment descriptor and that is called mta.yml. For that we will run the command cds at mta. Now cds add actually is a, uh, is a, a capability which offers various option okay if we just check this uh, one th there are different like sample we can add we can add data uh, we can add Helm. this will be some configuration for the schema runtime and uh, yeah we are using basically MTA multi-target application so now we will be doing called uh, CDS add MTA so this multi-target architecture moment we add it it will create a deployment descriptor and it is adding this feature called MTA and you can see over here the MTA file is also built up okay let's maximize this more and what are the things it's created it's created a few more things uh, something uh, uh, relevant to us and many things we have to change now based on our application so this is uh, the first meta information of our application and how the building should be done when we create the actual archive file out of the MTA so this is the command that will execute this is our service and this is something the supportive resources that it need one is the destination service other one is the db but in our current application we did it very you know, minimalistic kind of a feature we didn't use any kind of a db folder db folder is completely empty hopefully there is no more information in db so that's the reason i don't need this db deployer right if you are using any hana or something as a db then this will be used for your deploying to hdi level right but i'm not using any database so this container also i don't need so these two things i don't need right but as i told we need one more thing and that is called the connectivity service so um, do one thing let's uh, rename it because we already have some destination and connectivity service that we created and already available in the btp uh, instance called a4h dest and a4h connect so let's uh, uh, change this to a4h test okay so that it will not recreate uh, in the as an instance again it will be reusing because it's a managed service right manage means if it is already there it will bind the current application to that service and if it is not there then it will first create the instance of this service and then it will bind the application so that's the purpose of this managed okay so now one more thing we'll do we'll just take and create a duplicate but this name should be uh, connect because this is a connectivity service and destination should be connectivity right now we need to use this one over here we don't need db but we need um, one more thing called connect so that way my mta is is done okay mta is done and voila what we need next when you deploy to btb it will also look for certain authentication okay now this application also didn't attach any uh, access security or access UA so for that one more thing we'll do we'll go to CDS RC JSON and here we need to do little more thing we'll be adding something called requires okay sorry requires and we'll put something called auth and auth should be our mocked right yeah so it's a records and auth is mocked so that way when i'll deploy it to uh, you know btp it will not complain about the chart token related kind of a thing so all good so what next we have to uh, create the empty archive file so for that what we can do will be running this command called mbt build we can run mbt build or maybe we can right click on this mta and click on this build mta so let's see what it does we'll be we'll need to take care uh, take a look on the uh, gen folder that is going to be created out of this process 
and uh, it has to be done successfully perfectly to avoid any deployment issue so let's go to our gen folder as you can see chain is the generated folder db it's created certain uh, package.json that's okay not a problem but service is what our point of interest node modules get successfully created under the service you can see the library then my uh, product catalog .js and also we have the package.json so all good i think all loaded perfectly so what next we'll do uh, we will now deploy this thing to btp okay uh, okay so we can do one thing we can do cf deploy in ta archives and this gap side by side 1.0.0 mtar so this is the uh, enter file archive file that i'll be deploying it to btp so click enter and it's a 5.20 mb kind of a size and it will take certain time at least more than a minute uh, so i'm just taking a pause meantime looks like the application is deployed successfully and uh, process finished and application is also um, in started condition so let's go back to our uh, service uh, instance and this is what this uh, I don't know why it stopped so let's read on it and see go back yeah it started if I click on that yeah, it's coming if I click on product list awesome it's still working from the BTP so if you have missed out this connection because of the connectivity service it didn't bind to your MTA which I just showed you so fix it and it should also work for your case okay all right so now next in interesting thing is like when you have this destination whether this destination is perfectly set up or it's working or not we don't need to build an entire application to do that okay so what we'll do we will probably test now this destination called a4h without building up any application and that pretty well you can do it from our business application studio command line tooling now we have this a4h as a destination that we configured and to access the backend on-prem system where you can see this above for hana 1909 and 3000 port is the uh, in a proxy or kind of virtual host and port i have mentioned it's going for a basic authentication ideally you should use a principal propagation uh, but for demo purpose it probably is okay but one of the important thing over here that you always remember that two properties are very much essential one is called html5 dynamic uh, setup destination and another is the HTA web ID enabled should be true these two things is very very important so what we'll do let's see whether this destination itself done correctly or not configured correctly or not for that what we can do we can run a certain commands called command will be using and we'll be running it in our business application studio command line today we'll be running curl command uh, and then what we want to do we want to make a call called http and destination name followed by minus capital i and if everything goes fine it should give me 403 because it's just a, a base url i have given which is an host and port but it doesn't have any follow on entity which is SAP or poor data then the service name followed by the entity so there's a full path so that's why it is giving 403 which is perfectly fine but now what we'll do we'll edit this one and let's delete one of the important property called web id dynamic uh, destination okay this one let's delete it and now click a uh, click us uh, save okay so if you now check connection what will happen it will it is still showing that connection to my f4h is successful right it looks like there is no problem happen fine so let's run this command once again and see what the situation now now you see it's giving a 500 internal server error right so you know that your destination itself is not correctly configured okay so that way you know it and even using this destination you can get a full data from our backend that we'll see shortly so let's change back our destination setup and we'll add a new property 
and I'll add the dynamic destination set to true click on save and now if I do a check connection again it will show connection is successful there is no other message but now if you run this command now we'll get something called 403 forbidden which we received at the first time all right so what next we'll do we'll make a call to our service entity endpoint for that call and we can use a command called get http have get then http um, a4h correct that is our destination followed by sap opo o data iwbp gateway sample underscore basic so that is our service followed by product set if i just run this uh, it's showing a 200 okay but if i don't put minus i and run it will probably give me the enter bunch of record which is very difficult to read so let's change it to a uh, json fashion so for that what we'll do okay so now we'll what we'll do we'll put a header option called hyphen or minus capital h which means the header then within quotation we'll put the accept right and i'll be saying application slash json so that way it will give me in json fashion so let's see and now it is showing in a json but still not good to be you know it's not easy to understand all right so do one more thing so now we'll do we'll pipe use a pipe sign and then we'll use jq so jq is called json query which is a powerful utility i created two videos on that that you can see uh, in the, on the screen now so i'll definitely recommend you to learn jq uh, so that it will you know improve your productivity and you'll feel more confident while handling things with the cli level so if i just run this one now you you see the data is more beautifully placed but there's a lot of data so we'll put a little query now and i want to limit down um, by let's say one record means the dollar top i'll be using so dollar top is equal to one if i run voila i see only one record from the curl command that way the destination is used to get all the data from the backend i think the discussion was helpful and probably this is what you wanted to know so like share subscribe my channel and to know more about the cutting edge technologies in sap thanks for watching and shortly connecting with the something new next time till then take care goodbye